Queen debate. The Honourable Member for Kabitibite Niskamang. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to be able to speak to this motion that I am seconding, and I will be uh, sharing my time with uh, the member for Timmins James Bay, and I do that uh, abs very often for many activities because our writings are close together, so I'm happy to do it as well in this House for Debate. I think our motion will really allow people to understand the difference between the two parties the other two parties, the NDP, because uh, they seem to be uh, enthralled to certain special interests. In Canada, like in the United States, the uh, Keystone Pipeline project has raised serious concerns, especially with regard to its environmental impact and also with regard to job creation. The NDP believes in a sustainable economy, which is in the interest of Canadians and Canada in general. What did this do when Suncor cancelled its uh, refining upgrading project of $11.6 billion when it realized that it was uh, more profitable to simply export the uh, raw bitumen instead of upgrading it? It did nothing. So on the one hand, uh, jobs are leaving this country and on the other, this government is very happy to trade in Canadian jobs for dividends from certain companies. Without this upgrading capacity from our Canadian companies, we are losing a, the, a major possibility of increasing our, uh, G, our uh, GDP and uh, jobs relating to the oil industry. And when I'm talking about uh, jobs relating to that, it's not just in the oil industry. There is a complete a system when we talk about uh, the economy. So when uh, there are more jobs, it requires more nurses, more teachers. Uh, there might be uh, a lot more business for the local grocery. Uh, the uh, hairdresser will have more clients and uh, so it's not just about uh, jobs in the oil industry itself. It's everything that is linked to that, everything that goes with it. Because uh, to create uh, jobs here, while well, people invest uh, some of the money that they earn in back into their community. So I just wanted to point that out, Mr. Speaker. Ah, now I would like to talk about the problem of, uh, or rather the issue of uh, respecting our international uh, environmental commitments. When we talk about developing natural resources, and I come from a resource region myself, my writing is uh, very largely based on uh, the development of natural resources. So this development must be done taking into account the final cost. Sure, we have to see what it brings in, but uh, if we are plundering our environment, well then, the government has to pay the cost, for example, in terms of environmental damages, if it affects people's health, then people, the government has to pay as well. So we always have to strike a balance when we are developing natural resources between what it is going to uh, give us in terms of investment and the risks we take, either environmentally or with regard to safety. And I think that by striking that balance, we can simply say, well, if there are such risks, well, we'll have to contain them as much as possible in order to responsibly develop that resource. That's the, but obviously we have to keep our jobs here so we can uh, have Canadians work instead of exporting these jobs. That is simply logic. And if we can't do that, well then I think that we must respect, we must protect rather our natural resources, especially for the next generation. We have to take into account the uh, idea of intergenerational fairness. There are uh, some members here who have very young children and I think that uh, both those members and all Canadians have very young children. Uh, they would like to know that uh, they are going to hand down a uh, a uh, planet that is not environmentally damaged. 
we they, we want to be sure that we have a transition plan in place for them. So we have to be fair to future generations. And Canada today is uh, having trouble, rather like a patient that is who is suffering from a number of symptoms. There are more and more uh, vulnerable jobs. People are having more trouble finding work. The environment is poorly protected. And the Canada is the only country that has withdrawn from the Kyoto Protocol and that is not even able to att to attain the targets that uh, the conserv Conservative government itself set. So uh, we, the, the transportation of uh, crude requires the importation of 200,000 tanker cars of chemicals and uh, the CO2 emissions associated with the uh, Keystone XL uh, pipeline project uh, are equal to annual emissions of some 626,000 cars. And uh, once again, thanks to the Conservative government, the National Roundtable on, on Environment and the Economy was abolished, and uh, the Conservatives have thus uh, shown a flagrant lack of respect for the fundamental principles of sustainable development. When we talk about uh, the development of natural resources, it always has to be done hand in hand with uh, sustainable development. Otherwise, there is a clear lack of vision in the government's economic and environment strategy that underpins the development of these resources. Currently, we have uh, transportation systems that are poorly managed, especially when it comes to transporting uh, hazardous materials. The government just waits for until train derails or pipelines break before it uh, takes action. Before in Ebitsibitemiskemeng, we were a region where resources were exported and uh, we didn't really take advantage of, uh, of the processing the jobs were not kept in the region, but uh, people worked on that. And today, like the un certain universities in our region, are uh, transforming the resources. So we develop them, but we also develop, or we also benefit fully from the development of those resources in the region. And that is what the government should uh, try to do with the oil industry and the oil sands. With Excel, what both the Conservatives and the Liberals are going to do is break the chain across Canada and conserve one single link. So we're going to, going to be going back to the colonial era and I find that that is not very good for Canada and it really shows a narrow-minded kind of vision for our Canadian youth. It is important to add value to our non-renewable oil resources by refining and upgrading them here in Canada. We, we learned that uh, the steel pipelines will be produced by Indian and Russian companies. So I think that uh, that's a double trouble. Don't, can't, can't we produce uh, steel pipelines here in Canada? Once again, those are jobs that could have uh, benefited the entire manufacturing sector, for example, in Ontario. But no, uh, the government has chosen to give that contract to Indian and Russian companies. So. Should the Conservatives with their Liberal cronies go forward with this project and open the XL pipeline with 840,000 barrels a day, what is going to happen to Canada's energy security? People already find that uh, gas is too expensive and now they're just losing control. We're exporting crude and it comes back to us and I think that is a lack of vision. People say that this is a non-renewable resource and we're going to run out of it. And what does the government do? Well, all it does is export 40,000 good jobs that could have been situated here in Canada, so it just sends, sends them abroad. So I think that a real Canadian strategy should, be, sh should focus on offering our Canadian market. It should serve our interests first and foremost at the best possible price on the international market. We are able to offer global markets products that have been refined here instead of sending them abroad to be upgraded. The pipeline is the symbol of a Canadian government that does not trust Canadians in order to uh, 
process these products and offer upgraded products. So, Mr. Speaker, I would like to close by saying that I find it unacceptable that we should deprive ourselves of thousands of jobs that young people in our, uh, from my region should have to move uh, to Alberta or that they should be, the jobs should be shipped abroad. I find it unacceptable, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Questions and comments? Question and the Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Mr. Speaker, I think a part of it is trying to understand uh, basic economics. Uh, the, the economic impact which generates thousands of jobs, literally millions of dollars, which provide a lifestyle for virtually every Canadian uh, from coast to coast to coast through the exportation of many of our natural resources. Not every country wants uh, the, the final product. They're looking for natural resources. And I listened to the member uh, speech, and I'm thinking that the, the NDP would oppose the exportation of natural resources. When I listen to the NDP's comments in regards to the Keystone XL, one can only draw the conclusion that they want to shut down the oil sands. And if you listen to the leader of the New Democratic Party when he talks about the, remember the Dutch elm disease, Mr. Speaker, and the devastating impact that he tried to portray that Western Canada was having on all of Canada, Mr. Speaker. Could he the Honourable Member for Timmins James Bay on a point of order. A reference to a Dutch elm disease, that's about a tree. It was about the Dutch economy. Uh, don't really think that was a, a point of order. Uh, perhaps the op Honourable Member uh, might have the opportunity to, uh, to have uh, some say on that uh, at a future point in time. The Honourable Member for uh, Winnipeg North. Well, obviously the member understood. The message that's being sent, and, it's, he's a, and him and his party should be sensitive, more sensitive to not only all Canadians, but in particular, from my perspective, I represent a prairie uh, riding, and the natural resource development is very important uh, to the prairies, uh, Mr. Speaker. So the question that I, that I have to the member is why do the NDP refuse to acknowledge the important role? that the exportation of natural resources can play for all of Canada, for Canada's economy. That yes, we diversify and add value where we can, but let's remember how important the exportation of natural resources really is for all of us. The Honourable Member for Abitibi-Temiskaming. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. On the contrary, my region is based on the development of natural resources, but I want it to be done intelligently and responsibly. I'd like to take the time to read something to uh, my Liberal colleague. Last spring, the Conservative Minister of Finance went to Washington and proudly said that this uh, project would create jobs in the United States. And uh, the Department of State uh, said that uh, this was important for the economy of both countries because it would create over 40,000 jobs, uh, well-paying jobs in the United States. So if my Liberal colleague is concerned about uh, job creation in the United States, well, I am more concerned about the creation of jobs in Canada. I want young people to have jobs here at home. I want us to do more with our own natural resources. I want us to develop them. I don't want them to be uh, sold off uh, cheaply. I want us to do something intelligent with them. Hello. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for bois saint Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I would like to thank my colleague for her passion Son esprit and uh, for all the information that she has given us on job creation in Canada, but also her concern for young people. I think that she really cares about the development of sustainable jobs here in Canada to help out the next generation and uh, so that we can hand down a healthy environment where the economy is uh, vibrant but where we can uh, provide ad added value to jobs. The Honourable Member for Abitibi-Temiskaming. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Indeed. I am very concerned about youth employment. I come from a resource region and a lot of people went to school in my region, but then they decided to move away and uh, try their luck out west. But when I see that there are projects that could represent uh, vast economic potential and then they decide and the government decides to ship all those jobs off to the United States, I just don't find that that makes any sense. 
I did. I trained in welding, and uh, people, the people I trained with, could work on the pipelines. And all of a sudden, the government is saying, "No, we're just going to ship those jobs to the United States." It's that's nonsense. We want to have young people who work in this country, but the government isn't trying to find solutions to have them work here at home. So it's complete, no, it's completely absurd. If uh, perhaps if there was no other way, but I think that we can do much better for our young people and for our economy, and that is what is not being done in this pipeline project. Reprise the debate. Deeming debate. The honourable member for 